His water is frozen. <laughs> is that confusing? Today we're taking down Christmas lights and we are getting ready to take the boat over to McCotter's Marina and Boat Yard and finally tackle the last of our projects to get the boat ready to continue exploring and head down to the Caribbean. Does it feel like Caribbean weather today? No, it's cold. Running aground is a very real possibility coming in here. Cross your fingers. I feel like that's so typical with our experience with boat yards is we end up finding things that we weren't expecting to find. Before I freaking drown out here, I'm gonna try and pull this thing. Ugh. I'm going aloft in a way that I've never done before. So you're gonna basically do the inchworm up the mast? Today is a really exciting day for me because it is my birthday. It's like take the good smelling part of gin and then multiply that by 10. Yay! I'm Desiree and this is my husband Jordan. We're sailing around the world, or at least trying to. Our boat Atticus 2 needs some work before she's ready to cross oceans, so we plan to stick around here in Little Washington for a month or two to tackle these projects before setting sail for the Caribbean. just noticed that the railroad bridge just closed that we have to like get through to get out of here I called him on the radio the guy briefly said that they've got a train coming and they're doing maintenance and so they're not sure when they're gonna be able to open next and then I was like okay so just to clarify you said you don't know when you can open and he didn't even respond so I don't think there's any bridge operator in history who has enjoyed interacting with us on the radio. <laughs> I feel like they all need like a nice warm cup of coffee and a hug. <laughs> I think you might be nervous because we're moving. Yes. Oh yeah, thank you. You're a little Santa Claus. <laughs> you like the hood? You're nice and warm now. Do you feel better Now he's depressed again. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I'll take little buddy for a walk then. Gotta undepressify him. I know. <laughs> So kind of like how I said when we were in Maine, one of my favorite things about our stay there was getting to know that trail that was around the pond. I feel that way about Washington, except it's these streets with these houses right along the water. Mixture of the cool architecture, old houses, and then really pretty nature. You know, doing this walk every morning has been a really cool aspect of cruising the East Coast. Well, this makes our defeat feel better. All right, so we just got word on the radio that the bridge is up and running, so we got about 20 minutes. We got to bounce. Awesome, thank you very much. Oh yeah, that's a good boy. Get your belly, yeah. Blink once if we need to go right. Okay. So we are heading to McCotter's boat yard to get hauled out so that we can basically finish up the boat projects that we have before the boat is ready and trustworthy to really start sailing long distance offshore. So we are entering into Back Creek, which is where McCotter's boat yard is. And it's gonna be a little tricky coming in here because the depths in this creek have shoaled up over the last couple years, they said, particularly in the haul out slip itself. Hopefully we chose a day with a high enough tide where we're not gonna run aground, but running aground is a very real possibility coming in here, so cross your fingers. Oh, we're at a foot and a half. Gotta slow it down. <laughs> at least if we run aground, we'll do it real slow. See that over there, bud? Yeah. Don't do that. Got it. I yeah. prefer my sailboat above water. <laughs> please. So this is the part they said that's shoaled up quite a bit. This is where we really need to cross our fingers.
All right, so the bottom looks pretty darn good. There's a couple of blisters in the hull in the paint, but they're not very deep. It's not really a big issue. But we did find a problem with our propeller. Because they're metal and they're in the salt water, they are prone to corrosion. And so typically propellers have a large zinc attached to them, which is a sacrificial piece of metal so that it will corrode before the propeller does. The zinc on this propeller had completely corroded and was gone by the time we pulled the boat out. And so the propeller itself has actually corroded a fair amount. Now we could just replace it, but this is a max prop, meaning that it's a feathering prop so that when we're sailing, it doesn't have a whole lot of drag. So max props are awesome, but they're also very expensive. So buying a new propeller is not an option. I contacted the manufacturer and they said that we can actually just send them the propeller and they can refurbish it. So we need to get this prop sent off today if we hope to get the propeller back in time for us to splash the boat. So I'm gonna clean up this prop, remove it, degrease it, and ship it off to PYI. Fingers crossed that they'll be able to salvage this thing. So yeah, next step is to dismantle the prop and I got to do it just right because there's a lot of intricate complex components inside and because there's a couple different adjustments that can be made on the inside of the propeller so I got to be able to mark down exactly what those adjustments were set to so that we can replicate that when we reassemble it so now that I've got the inside clean if I twist the housing until it lines back up with its original alignment, I can look inside and I can see that there's a little drill hole or like a notch. Then I look at the inside of this gear here and each one of these teeth on the gear has a corresponding letter. So when I look here and I align it, I have the letter E, so I'm gonna mark that down. Okay, so last step before I can remove this whole assembly is I've got to get this nut loose here. There's nothing to really keep the shaft from just spinning as I try to loosen the nut. So the only thing I can really come up with is there's a small little notch here on the side. I found a piece of wood here. I'm gonna hope that it fits. Yeah, perfect. Okay, we really lucked out there. Okay, it is getting very wet, very rainy out here. I borrowed a propeller puller to pull this hub off of the shaft, but it's too big. I can't actually fit it between the shaft and the rudder. I just quickly ran to Harbor Freight and I was able to find a smaller puller that does fit in here. All right, well, this is not quite working. Um, I do think that Maybe because everything's wet out here that it's a little bit harder to turn these threads than it should be, and it's getting late. So I'm gonna let this stay here overnight. I feel like that's so typical with our experience with boat yards is we haul out and we end up finding things that we weren't expecting to find. So oh, day one in the boat yard, total and complete failure. <laughs> All right, so today is a new day and I've got an idea for how to try to remove this bad boy. So one of the things that could have gone wrong with using just the puller is that yesterday it was raining and so the threads on the puller got wet and that can make the threads kind of seize up a little bit and not want to turn very freely. So there's a chance that we just didn't get this thing tight enough so that it pulled hard enough. So I'm gonna loosen this off, dry it off, spray it with some lubricant and then go at it again. I'm gonna put these larger jaws so that it can grab here to the very forward part of the hub. So give this a shot. Hopefully I don't have to go for another drive. Woo. Wow. <laughs> Okay, that's it. So I'm just gonna clean up all these components real good and then ship them off to PYI. So I just filled out the service form with a nice little note for the service guy to please do our prop quickly. Put this note into a box with all the prop stuff. We've completed the first part of a project. Good job, team.
we're, we're doing things. All right, well today is a really exciting day for me because it is my birthday. To celebrate, we are going to leave the boatyard in our dust for a little while and go do a gin tasting. So to make gin, you start off with a neutral spirit, which is basically a very high quality vodka. How does it smell? <clears throat> Alcoholic. Yeah. <laughs> wow, yeah, it smells like a frat house. So this is our floor scale. I actually haven't weighed myself in a while. Time to see how my beer diet has been working out so far. Nick, I think your scale's off by like 10 pounds. I'm sorry to tell you. Hey, he's telling you, but you put some weight on. <laughs> I'm just worried this batch is gonna turn out bad because that scale's not working. Okay, so now we're gonna add the botanicals into the neutral spirit, which is what gives Thousand Piers Gin its distinct flavor. What do we got there, Professor? This is a secret recipe. Just oh. look. So, ah, <laughs> this is basically our recipe sheet. So we're gonna start off with juniper. For it to be gin, juniper needs to be the single largest ingredient. And if you squeeze it, uh -huh. it's kind of resinous, which is where all the oil is. The next thing we're going to add is coriander. It's used a lot in Indian cooking as a spice. Oh, it's my favorite, cinnamon. Cinnamon's kind of got a fiery heat to it. So when you taste a thousand peers in that mid palate, you're getting that spice, a little heat. This is angelica. This is another of those kind of base spices. So elderberry is the berry, and this is the flower from oh. the tree. I don't eat a lot of flowers, but tastes floral. <laughs> Buddy, you like it. Flavor expert. This flower <laughs> tastes very floral. Almonds come with warming spice. Bitter orange. People know it if they've ever drank Campari. It smells wonderful. Mm -hmm. it? It smells it's like eating all of his ingredients. <laughs> <laughs> trying to be such a pretty combination of spices. Now we're gonna put all these delicious spices in there without so dropping them. Okay. Don't drop the bucket. <laughs> Stick your head in there, bud. It smells like deliciousness and a lot of alcohol. <laughs> well, here we have the fresh potatoes that we're gonna put in at this time. This is a uh, galangal. It's like in the ginger Ooh, family. Nice. It just has a more kind of aromatic flavor profile. This is ginger that's grown in a little farm just down the road. Mm, that's cool that you use local uh -huh. farmers as much as you can. We actually use the whole of the lemongrass. So this is the upper stem, but oh, you recognize more the yeah. main part of the stem. Mm. This is called kaffir lime, and it's the leaf of a lime tree. It has a wonderful kind of mellow lime flavor. Mm. Whoa. That's intense. Okay, this is the last thing we're gonna chop, which is... Dried peaches. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Okay, so is that everything we're adding? That's to... everything we're doing. We're gonna agitate him for a whole three days. By then, he should be really agitated. This whole part of the process then is just put the ingredients in with the gin and let it stir yes, for a long yeah. time. So we charge the still with the alcohol and we put the botanicals in the still and it's been now macerating for three days. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna charge the gin basket with botanicals. And basically what happens is it still heats up and the alcohol starts to vaporize as it passes up through the helmet, up there through here on these pipes and it passes through the gin basket on the way to the condenser. So we're now gonna take this down and load it up with botanicals so we can get going. We're just using the peel for this process? Yeah, we're just using the peel. So what happens with gin is that the alcohol basically dissolves the essential oils that are in the botanicals and all the essential oils that are in citrus are in the peel not in the fruit itself. So now we're loading up the basket. And what is that there? Lotion. It places the lotion in the basket. <laughs> Buddy. Uh, this is juniper. <laughs> this is juniper, okay. It's like a time capsule. We've charged the gin basket, and now it's time to fire up the still. If you could do the honor, I please. I would be honored, thank you. Okay. So what's gonna happen is the alcohol's gonna boil, it's gonna go up into the helmet, it's gonna condense and drop down and drop down until it reaches a certain temperature, when it's gonna push up out the top of the still, and then it's gonna go across here, through the gin basket to the condenser. and basically has small pipes in it to carry the alcohol and it has water and the two are gonna mix. The water's gonna cool, cool down the alcohol vapor and it's gonna condense. This is called the parrot and this is where the product's gonna come out. It's very citrusy. You guys should make candles out of this. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah. There we go. Yay! Hey! So beautiful. Put your mouth under there, bud. I was just gonna say, like technically, can you just 
It's really good. <laughs> wow. So we're gonna sit down at the bar at the Hackney restaurant, which is right next door to the distillery, and we're gonna try some gin drinks. So this is a cloudy gin and tonic. Yep. And it's cloudy because... When you add the tonic and the ice, yeah, the essential oils start to come out of suspension, so it makes this lovely pearlescent. Interesting. It's so, like, complex. It's cool to smell it now and compare it to the smells that we were experiencing preparing everything. Mm, that is delicious. This is our Blueberry 75. It's just our take on a fridge 75, but with our Blueberry gin instead. Ooh, it's so pretty. Looks like a perfect birthday drink. Yeah, the gin is so smooth, it almost doesn't even taste like a gin drink. It just tastes like this homogenous mix of deliciousness. We're gonna make one more, which is probably our house speciality cocktail here at the Hackney. We literally had it on since day one, and it's everyone's favorite, and it's called Field of Dreams. Oh my God. These are all really good, but something about this cocktail, it like uh -huh. really just brings it all together. I feel like I chug the 75, but this, it's like, you, you wanna have it sparingly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I like so, it. Yeah, what's interesting for me about these old downtown areas that let's say got hollowed out when you know, big box stores came to town and they built strip malls on the edge of town, which is pretty well the story of every small town in the US. The regeneration of these are done by people who want to create unique businesses, but with people who've got a passion to do something and to run their own business and run their own thing. And they're really the engine for me, for people who are revitalizing these wonderful old downtowns. So did you have a good birthday, buddy? Does this answer your question? <laughs> it does, actually. <laughs> All right, so how's project demasting going so far, buddy? Yeah, I'm really happy now because it was kind of windy and gusty earlier. The winds calmed down, so I think we can just get the Genoa down. This is the stay sail, and that came down real easy. Yeah, it's funny though because I've been working on boats for a long time. We had Atticus, we pulled the mast on that, what, twice? But this is just a totally different beast. There's so much more stuff on the mast, it's more complicated, so I'm having to really like think about what we need to remove. Right now it's 2.30, we got the crane coming first thing tomorrow morning, so we got a lot more work to do. You wanna go with Jordan up the mast? I've gotta remove the aerials on the top of the mast, the electric wind indicator, the, the Windex wind indicator, and then maybe the VHF antenna just so that when we pull the mast tomorrow, the crane and strap don't damage anything up there. I'm going aloft in a way that I've never done before. This is a neat way. It's basically just two rope cams, one for my feet straps and then one for the harness. And basically I'm able to just kind of push myself up with my feet and then I'd slide the harness cam up and then I'm able to sit down in my seat and then slide the feet strap up and then just repeat that over and over again. So you're gonna basically do the inchworm up the mast? Yeah, that's exactly right. down, you ready? Hey guys, thanks so much for checking out this week's episode. Also, we got our hands on an extra bottle of Thousand Peers gin that we made in this very episode. So we're gonna be giving this away to one of our patrons. So if you're a patron and you wanna experience all the delicious flavors in this bottle of gin, definitely check out our patron page today or our patron-only Facebook group, and I'll be announcing the details for the giveaway there. Also, if you are a patron, thank you so, so much for all of your love, support, and encouragement. Your guys' support makes these videos 100% possible and we couldn't do it period without you. First off we've got a couple of patrons who've reached super bud status because they've been a patron with us for so long. So a huge thank you to Heidi and Franny from Heidi and Franny's Garage. Hi Jordan and Desiree I'm Franny and I'm Heidi and we're coming to you from snowy Colorado. Really quick a little bit about us we have a smaller automotive YouTube channel and where I think we found you guys was your crossover episode with Uma. Just that was 
was just super duper fun. We went to the Annapolis Boat Show back in October and we had a great time. In fact, we got to meet you guys. It was awesome. And a huge thank you to our newest Bosun level patrons, Marianne Komernicki, Darren Adams, Thomas Moxie, and Kevin and Eddie Williams. Moving on to our Yacht Master level patrons, thank you so much. Sugar, John Pinnard, Mark and Sherry Haraway, Stylized Transport, John Slater, Paul Christie, George Merrill, and Scott and Terry Benjamin. And finally, to our newest Deccan level patrons, thank you so much. Austin Jackson, Michelle Reynolds, Frank, no last name, just a mysterious Frank out there, Kirk Brunson, Naveen Tondapu, and Jason Papafotis. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful weekend, and we'll catch you next week.